Hey everyone, Joshua here. Earlier this year, I applied to the 25th annual Telluride Film Festival Student Symposium, and luckily enough, I made it in. The Student Symposium is an educational program put on by the festival, which brings together 50 film lovers from around the world to experience the festival and all it has to offer firsthand. Personally, I have never before in my life been as completely immersed in film and filmmaking as I was during my short time at the festival. So, with my shiny new and hopefully unobtrusive Galaxy S4, I decided to make a short film diary for my experience. So, thank you for watching, and without further ado, let's take a trip to TFF40. Day 1 After a meet and greet with our peers and debriefing on the town of Telluride from our awesome staff, we were treated to a pre-festival concert from the Punch Brothers though I have to admit the breathtaking scenery made it a little difficult to focus on the performance. And then there was also the rain. Lots of rain. Yeah, I would like to know on my own that I had my internship when I was That nice film, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> right, this could be the open. Yeah, and then it ends sometimes. Yeah. It ends with the German flag. On day two, we had a few hours to get acquainted with the town. That evening, after a group discussion with Ken Burns and some more rain, the festival was ready to officially begin. At the feed, festival guests got to mingle with one another, and it was pretty cool spotting people like Francis Ford Coppola and the Coen brothers just walking down the street. Before heading to our screenings, we took a few moments to hear Mr. Coppola introduce locations and Rumblefish at Elks Park. And of course, I did make the film, and I guess, you know, my career is a funny one. Most of my films start out as big flops and failures, and only years later do I hear, oh, that was really interesting. Of course, I had my heart broken so many times on these films opening that, um, that uh, you know, I became sort of immune to it, and I find it amusing that some films I made years ago, like Apocalypse Now, are now considered uh, as uh, maybe classics. But I had to go through the... Then, the student group went to screen Errol Morris' new documentary, The Unknown Known, at the Sheridan Opera House, and Werner Herzog's Death Row at the Chuck Jones Cinema. The morning of day three, the group would meet for an in-depth discussion on the movies we had previously screened. Then we went to see Asghar Farhadi's The Past, which was pretty riveting, followed by Philippe Claudel's Before the Winter Chill. Later on, we would also sit down for a small group discussion with the directors of both films, as well as Mr. Morris and Werner Herzog. That evening, we would also screen Les Mortes Rouges and The Pruder, as well as Blue's The Warmest Color. Most of us only got about three or four hours of sleep that night. On day four, we screened Les Maisons de l'Eridio and attended a tribute to Mohamed Rasolov. During a break, some of us also went to the 12 Years a Slave panel with Steve McQueen and the principal cast in attendance. talking about since the film premiered the other night is just how absent the story of slavery has been from movie screens. I mean, certainly we can think of movies that have had slave characters in them, many that have completely distorted the prism of slavery. At the end of the day, it's about a good story. 
you know, I'm interested in going to the movies. I don't care what the subject matter is. It's about good stories. Yes, it's interesting that there hasn't been a lot of movies that are made about this particular subject. But it's just, it, the story was just so fascinating, so amazing when I opened that book. And that's what I wanted to tell. Um, We're talking about your film, as, or your three films, as, as if they're extreme human behavior rather than the norm. And I just wonder why filmmaking, and now that you're working for a studio or whatever that- you working for no studio. Okay. Well, now that you're going more mainstream. Oh. <laughs> Not mainstream? It's actually good they're gonna do 13 years of Slave next year. I mean, I just wonder why is Hollywood so conservative and why money. aren't the movies being made that uh, clearly everybody money. wants to see? It's all money. Everything's money. Money, 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 money. Yeah. It's a business. It's a business. But everybody wants to see what's well, really no, going actually, on. Well, no, actually, you know, what they do, no, it's like the demographic that I think, you know, Hollywood sort of looks towards are, you know, teenagers. Um, like 13-year-old boys? Yeah. Um... That's just kind of the reality. It's like when money gets involved and it becomes a business, that's sort of... But I think, you know, things are changing. I mean, you know, it, now it's more... E it's easier to make a movie now than it ever was. You know, Francis Ford Coppola said, I don't know, 30 years ago, that there'll be a girl in Ohio with a camera that'll be making movies and it'll be deprofessionalized. And that is kind of the reality now. The cameras that we've got, digital, whether people like them or not, you know, in relation to film, it's easier to make a film now than it ever was, and cheaper. The problem is distribution. I would hope so, yeah. I don't see why. I mean, you know, I'm just... I'm just I'm not. Again, all this nationality business is, is a, bit, a, bit, a, bit, a bit odd, for me at least, because it's, so, it's, it's not about, you know, sort of British or, or Irish or American or, or, or Kenyan or whatever. It's about film and doing the best job you can to make a story. Again, I mean, if you want to talk about... Day five. <laughs> After some more rain, we screened Ida and had a Q&A with director Pavel Pavlikowski immediately afterwards. What's next? Do you have another project in the works? Yes, but I want to not make any films for a couple of years to write stuff. Later that day, a few of us took to the gondola over the mountain to hopefully catch the North American premiere of Hayao Miyazaki's Kaze Tachinu, with a special introduction from Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall. We were all pretty excited. Hello, it's nice to see so many people coming to see this film. and. Um, and it's a real honor for Frank and I to be able to present this to you. This will be the first North American screening. <laughs> and you may wonder why we're associated in any way with this. And um, what happened was about 12 years ago, we had the good fortune to, to meet Miyazaki-san and his producer, Suzuki-san and we became close friends with them. And they came to us about eight years ago and wanted to see if we could help them with North American distribution on their films. There was a lot of concern as to why the films did so well in Japan, but didn't necessarily do that well in North America. So the first film we did was Ponyo. I don't know if... So many people are aware of his work. And, and the thing that's extraordinary about this film, this is, you will see that this is an extremely personal film for Miyazaki. He actually thought about this film for many, many years and felt that it wasn't necessarily something he would do in animation. And it was his producer, Suzuki-san, who convinced him that he should make the film. So Frank's going to say a little bit more about it, uh, but I think you're going to really love this. Thanks, Kim. Um, it is a special night for us to be here tonight. 
not only because you are the first audience in North America to see the movie. We can apply again. Very cool. Uh, but also because it's Miyazaki-san's 11th feature directing movie. And today, just a few hours ago, he announced his retirement. So this is his last film as a director. Very special night, kind of bittersweet, but in our opinion, he saved his best for last. So I hope you agree. Thank you very much. Enjoy the film. And then came day six, the final day of the festival. After some of us went to screen Nebraska at the Warner Herzog Theater, we all headed down to a pretty nice and somewhat bittersweet Labor Day picnic. And a few hours later, after our final group discussions with the filmmakers, it was time to put up our chairs. The student symposium had officially come to an end. But we didn't let that stop us. Rushing to attend as many remaining films as we could, some of us attended the final screening of 12 Years a Slave, and one of my personal festival favorites, Gravity, which was also introduced by Alfonso Cuaron himself. And, uh, and uh, uh, it's the, the amazing thing is how welcome you feel here. And that's thanks to, I guess, that a lot of the, uh, uh, the, the, the people that are here right now here in the, in the screen room. So, uh, thank you very much because uh, you, did a, you do an amazing job here. Um, so, well, I think that I better shut up and you watch the movie. It's going to be better. But, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you for shutting up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you so much for being here. And, well, I hope you enjoy it. And then came day seven, which meant it was time to leave this beautiful town and start thinking about school and work and life again. However, this last week would be truly impossible to forget. Well guys, thanks for joining me on this trip down memory lane, and if you're interested in attending the Telluride Film Festival, I highly encourage each and every one of you to look into the Student Symposium program. It is truly a life-changing experience for young and old filmmaker and film enthusiast alike. As for my fellow Symposiumites, this was an amazing experience, and it was so great meeting each and every one of you. If I don't see you on set or at the movies, I'm sure I'll see you again next summer. And finally, I just want to give a huge special thanks to Shannon and Molly for making this trip possible for me. I can't thank you two enough. Well, thanks for watching.